Hey guys, it's Brett here with the Tuning School, and this Tech Tuesday, we're going to be going on how to set up an AFR error histogram and the new HB Tuners 3.0 software. So for those of you that already have our course, you know that in the MAF and VE tuning guide, when you go to Tune Wide Open Throttle, we have you set up a MAF uh, AFR error histogram. Now what this does is it looks at your external wideband, and it looks at your mass, MAF sensor, and it looks at what your commanded air fuel ratio is, and it goes, so you commanded this much air fuel ratio, your wideband said that you had this much air fuel ratio, you're 5% off, let's say, and it creates that histogram much like your long-term fuel trims histograms would work. So in the new 3.0 software, the way you set that, this histogram up is a little bit differently than you did in the 2.24 software. And so today I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it in the 3.0 software so it works the first time and every time. Okay, before we can jump into making our AFR Air graph or what used to be known as our AFR Air histogram, we have to make sure there's a couple things that we are recording in our channels list. The first thing obviously is gonna be our wideband. We have to have a wideband in there in order for all of this to work. So if you have not yet set up your wideband, then click this link here to watch the video on how to do that. If you have, then there's two other things that we have to add to this channels list. One is we need to add AFR commanded, air fuel ratio commanded, and then we need to add mass airflow frequency or mass airflow hertz as it used to be known. So in order to add those two things, let's go up here, we'll right click, go to add channel. The first thing we're gonna add is air fuel ratio commanded. So to do that, we'll go to engine, we will go to fuel, commanded slash desired, and then we will select air fuel ratio commanded and we'll double click on this. We double clicked on it, you can see back here that it went ahead and added it. Now we can close this window. Now we're going to add mass airflow frequency and as it appears in this channel is here, it'll actually say mass airflow sensor. So what we'll do is we'll right click, we'll go add channel. Now I'm gonna just point out something that I've pointed out before in previous videos, but I just wanna reiterate here that HP Tuners has built in a really nice feature to this new 3.0 software, and that is if I click backspace, it'll actually delete what it set up here as far as text filter, and I can type in anything I really want to. I can type in mass, and it comes up with mass airflow sensor frequency here for me. And I don't have to go through the engine, uh, I don't have to go through the engine folder, I don't have to go to the airflow, mass airflow. It makes it really nice when you know exactly what you want. You can just type it up there really quickly and it'll pull it up. So if we were to do this the hard way, we would expand the engine folder, then the airflow folder, then the mass airflow folder, and then from there we'd actually select mass airflow sensor frequency. So now that we've found the mass airflow sensor frequency, we'll double click on it. We can see that it got added in the background here. So now we'll go ahead and close this window again, and we've got everything that we need in order to make our AFR air graph. So now that we've got everything we need, go over to the AFR, or excuse me, go over to the graph section, we can right click, select graph layouts. From here we can select the add graph icon and then select add table from the drop down menu. So we've got this new table here that it's brought up for us. So we actually got to tell it what it is that we're trying to do here. What is it that we're trying to define in our histogram? So to do that we'll click here, unclick to insert or change. And we'll scroll down to the maths section or the maths, excuse me, M-A-T-H-S section. So down here, maths. And so in here, we're able to select what it is that we're doing here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna expand this Lambda and AFR folder. Then we're gonna select AFR error. Now the same thing applies here. If I really wanted to, I could have typed AFR error and the text filter text box at the top, it would have brought it up, but I showed you guys how to do it the long way. So we'll double click on AFR error. We can see now it changed a couple of things for us. It actually labeled it for us and then it told us that rating in a percentage, we've got one decimal, and then what we'll do is we'll change this to cell hits required to five. It's just gonna help us not get outlier data. It's actually helpful when you're building graphs most of the time. So now that we've done that, we have to define what the column axis is for this chart. And because it's a mass airflow chart, and it's a mass airflow table basically is what we're creating, we have only gonna have column axes, we won't have any row axes because there isn't any row axes, it's just the one. And You'll kind of understand that a little bit more when we look at the mass airflow table. But we'll go to clicker, insert, or change. We need to select mass airflow frequency. So let's use a little trick. We'll click the backspace. Then we'll type in mass, M-A-S-S. -S, and then we see here, 
that we've got mass airflow sensor frequency, and we'll double click on that. This generic sensor tip pop-up box will appear quite frequently, and it's something that's really common. A lot of times when we first get into here, you select from a different area, like you select specific sensors or parameters, and it's HTTP Tuner basically tells you here it's better to use generic ones when you can. And so if you accidentally select uh, a specific one, then just go ahead and select yes, it's good. We can use the generic ones. But if when you go in here, if you go down to this generous, generic sensor section and just find what we're looking for in here, then it won't actually ask you that question. You can actually just click it and it'll go into there without asking you if you want to use it. So if you guys wanted to skip that step, of having to click yes, good, use the generic sensor one, then you can go directly to that section the first time if you really wanted to. It's just something to keep in mind. So now that we've done that, we have to actually define what the column axis values are. So to do this, we have to actually use the tune file of the car that we're working with. So the car that we're working with today is a 2006 Chevy Corvette. You can see that up here. And it's a six liter, um, and it's got the VIN and all that good stuff. And so what we can do now is we can go over to our tune file, and we can pull up our mass airflow frequency table. And so you see I've already done that here. Now, if in case you don't know where this is located, all you have to do is open the engine icon, go to airflow, and then under the general section, you've got mass airflow frequency. And sometimes you'll have a high and a low, and we're going to be working around with a high today because we are working with a wide open throttle. So now that we have it open, what we can do is we can right click inside the table, go to column axes, copy labels. And then we can go back to our scanner here, right click, paste, and it'll paste those column axes values into this text box here. And that's going to define exactly how our graph display is going to you know, look. And so from here, we've now officially set up everything. We're done. We can go ahead and exit out of here. We can go look at our AFR graph. We can see that it looks just like what our mass airflow table looked like inside the tune. And so from here, we'll be able to start the car up, do some wide open throttle testing, and see how far off our AFR error is. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, that you're able to learn something from it. If you have any questions, feel free to hit us up at 727-264-8875. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.